Doctor Sleep novel, and our script seems to be very much about, you know, recovery. You know, the, 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 the child, having gone through this terrible experience, how does, he, how does he carry on and how does he deal with his shine? How does he deal with the fact that he's different? And, um, and, and then and he deals with it by drinking like his father did to the point where he can't do that anymore. And, and uh, he's, he's, as his father did, his father got sober, I believe, you know, five, six months before, they, before he took the job at the Overlook Hotel. But um, our Dan gets sober and, you know, and then is led back to the Overlook Hotel eventually. He's working in, a, in an old folks, in a, in a hospice, in fact, an, an old folks hospice. And and he um, he fi he finds although he's he's done this before in our story discover you know we discover that he's rather helpful to people as they pass away and so he sits with the people who are dying and helps them cross over if you like because he's and that's where he gets the he talks to them about it being like falling asleep and it's like a wonderful sleep and so he gets the the nickname Doctor Sleep. She reaches out to Dan. She doesn't know him and he doesn't know her, but she also has the shine. She also has the psychic ability and she's, she projects into his world. She's looking for help. He hears her. Because he hears her, she, she, when she really needs, needs his help, she finds him and comes to him. At first he turns her away and because his whole philosophy early on in the story is not to use the shine, is to, he's drunk to sort of suppress it all these years to suppress the horrible visitations that he gets in his mind and the hallucinations he gets with people visiting him from the Overlook Hotel, ghosts and spirits that are trapped there. And he's developed a way by the, through the help of Dick Halloran of trapping them and keeping them locked away inside him. And so he's all about not using the shine, not using his abilities, trying to keep it all just on the down low. And so when Abra reach, comes to him, he suggests that she just, you know, go home and leave things alone. Don't, don't, you know, pry into things that don't, 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 um, that aren't your business and don't shine. And it's really through his relationship with her that she opens that up in him and they, he realises that's an important part of who he is. It's the worst place in the world for people who have the shine. And he knows that, um, he knows that he has the shine and he knows that Abra has it more than him. And he knows that Rose the Hat has it more than both of them. So... If she's if she is the most powerful person of or thing with the shine, then this is the best place to take her to to try and kill her because it's the it's it will be deadly for her to be in that space. We're doing a an adaptation of Stephen King's novel Doctor Sleep, and that's uh, that's that's as good an idea as any. You know, it's a it's an original story that he's written, and it's therefore an original movie. Of course, it, of course, we're, there's a lot of thought and and. Um, attention being paid to pleasing people that love that movie and people that love that book. I really like working with her. She's lovely. She's so bubbly and full of beans and the joys. And then when, when Mike says, uh, you know, stand by, she just like snaps into Abra and it's you just watch. Hey guys, here's today's daily fact. Now the snow that covers the hedge maze at the end of The Shining was actually a combination of styrofoam and salt. In fact, to effectively blanket the hedge maze, over 900 tonnes of the stuff had to be dumped on set. Hmm, there you go. Now remember to click here below to subscribe or over here for some more great content.